punch a ticket to the NCAA tournament today. It'll be Delaware State or the defending MEAC champions, the Howard Bison. It was Titanfall Friday here in Norfolk. The top two seeds both went down to the semifinals. Norfolk State losing to Howard. NC Central falling to Delaware State. And with that, we say good afternoon. Anish Rob, high flying John Williams with you. The Howard Bison have been on an incredible ascension these past few years. This was a perennial doormat in the MEAC. They break through to win the league and get to the NCAA tournament last year. The road back to the MEAC championship game has been much harder this year. It's definitely been adversity, but adversity wins you championships. Once you go through something like this Howard Bison program has, they've seen it all. They're prepared. But not only that, Delaware State has also been through some adversity, especially in this tournament. But it's all going to come down to rebounding, and I think Bryce Harris is going to be one of those guys that is going to have to board. And we talked about it before. Board man gets paid. Rebounds get you rings. And he's one of those guys as a Swiss Army knife for this team. Can Scored in a myriad of ways and guard to multiple positions. He was the number two scorer and rebounder in the MEAC this past season. Delaware State under head coach Stan Waterman won just six games a season ago. They're a six seed in this tournament. They were an afterthought. They were an underdog. But this is not your typical Cinderella. This is Cinderella with a leather jacket, ripped jeans, and brass knuckles. Absolutely. They're wearing flannels and they're growing beards as we speak. These guys play extremely gritty, play hard. They're diving on the floor trying to win 50-50 balls. And you see it's because of guys like DeWitt Tavares who can score the ball in a myriad of ways. He's been the heart and soul for this team. Um, a super freshman is what I like to call it. Freshman of the year. One of those guys that can really do it all for him. The top freshman in the MEAC, but down the stretch, he played like one of the best players in this conference. Officials for this MEAC championship, Keith Bennett, Tony Dawkins, and J.D. Rawls. Again, winner to the NCAA tournament. Delaware State has the lower seed wearing the road black, Howard in the home whites. Pull up three, and that is Martez Robinson. We welcome those of you who just watched Vermont win the America East. It is the MEAC Championship from Norfolk, Virginia, alongside former UNC Asheville star John Williams. I'm in a Shroff, Howard and Delaware State. Howard the four seed, Delaware State the six seed. And this is Marcus Dockery, no good on the long three. Seth Towns, the eighth-year senior who began his career at Harvard, knocks it down from the outside. Howard was the preseason favorite in the MEAC. They were the MEAC champions last year, getting to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1992. But, John, injuries, lineup shuffling has made the road much harder for Howard this season. Several players out as we speak, but they have a next man up mentality. They've gone 13 different starting lineups, but as talking to a lot of the coaching staff for Howard, the standard is the standard. Here comes Jevin Muniz, stripped by Towns. This Delaware State team only won 17 games over the last four years combined. 15 wins this year. How about Isaiah Warfield? That is his fifth three in this tournament. Only 16 all season. Yeah, he's understood that teams are playing off of him, and he has to make sure that they're playing them honest because it helps the entire Howard Bison program connectivity-wise. Robinson, first team, all MEAC guard, has all four for the Hornets of Delaware State. Look yeah. at the starting five for Howard. Dockery began his career at Maryland, had a big game in the semis, five threes, 19 points. Warfield knocked down three triples in that game, and Bryce Harris makes it go. Number two in scoring and rebounding in the MEAC. Absolutely, and obviously we talk about the importance of Bryce Harris, but also Dockery is one of those guys who hit a key three 
in the MEAC championship last year against Norfolk State to get them over the hump to come out with the championship last year. Alston Andrews picks up the foul and Jordan Hairston on his fourth school heads to the line. Kenneth Blakeney, his first couple of seasons at Howard, his teams went 5 and 33. 2022, they finished second in the league. Last year, they won the MEAC championship. Now trying to get to back-to-back -to -back NCAA tournaments at Howard for the first time in program history. He played at Duke, won a national championship in 92 for Duke, played for Mike Krzyzewski. He knows what a winner looks like. Well, obviously, look at his pedigree. I mean, that winning pedigree, he's got a formula that he's created from it. And, I've, you know, you got to thank Howard for giving him the, the time and the ability to build in the, the roster that he would like to, the character players that they would like to, that would start to create towards winning habits. Delaware State played in the second semifinal last night. They didn't get out of the arena until about 11.30 p.m. And now a 1 o'clock start this afternoon. Nice move by Muniz. And he's able to get the two for Delaware State. This Hornets team, again, they've knocked off a two seed and a three seed to get here, beating South Carolina State and then NC Central, the two seed last night. Yeah, getting out around midnight. There's no rest for the weary in a one-bid conference. You've got to just lace them up and get after it again. Ersten bothered by Tavares, the freshman of the year in the MEAC. Towns from deep. Offensive rebound, Warfield. Dockery lines it up, knocks it down. A career 42% three-point shooter. And shooting 52% against the number one seed in Norfolk State yesterday. It's carrying over into this championship game, and this team can score the ball at a high volume with a very efficient offense. How about the runner? It's Robinson who's got six for Delaware State. And you mentioned Howard's three-point shooting in the second half against Norfolk State in the semis, eight for 12 from three. Absolutely, and you see here, Robinson has been the, the head of steam for this Delaware State team. But yes, we talk about it. Howard was able to shoot the three at a high clip in that second half. I mean, just kept making winning play after winning play that Norfolk State could not keep, keep up with. And John, something to watch in this game. A complete clash of styles. Conflicting styles. Obviously, you see Delaware State likes to play in chaos. They were born in it, molded by it. While, you know, Howard likes to play in the half court. They like to get their sets up, run their stuff play with efficiency and so they it's going to be a, t a game of pace three in the key and howard turns it over stan waterman in his third season delaware state went eight and 50 in his first two seasons and this year you look at their league record of the regular season six and eight it may not jump out at you but we get a traveling call on this end. But this was a Delaware State team that, that fought. They were in a lot of close games. They lost a lot of close games late. And in this tournament, they're figuring out how to win. This is a confident team right now. And Anish, that's the adversity that we were talking about, that this team had to withstand to be able to get where we are right now. I mean, they had to go through some things. They had to fight. They had the tooth. They had the claw to be able to get to this championship. And so that has helped them to be in this situation as we speak. Tavares backing down Hairston. Tavares gets free, lets it go. And the rebound there by Bryce Harris. Downs has battled through multiple injuries. He's missed four of the last five years due to injury. An eighth-year senior who still has one more year of eligibility. Harris banging down low. Offensive rebound. Towns for the putback. He's looking for that first taste of the NCAA tournament. Absolutely. Obviously, he comes with the accolades. Um, you know, Ivy League player of the year a couple of years back. And a couple of years back. You know, I'm, just, I'm being Ten gracious years ago. here. I'm being gracious here. But, you know, with that being said, you can tell it. He wants to win this game. He wants to go dancing and put those shoes on. Andrews, no good. Rebound to Warfield. Now they call Towns Unk. 
getting his doctorate at Howard. Started at Harvard, Ohio State. And putting on a show early. He's got eight points for the Bison. You can see that Delaware State is struggling to guard the three-point line against that matchup zone. Brought to you by Principal. Let's build a retirement and benefits plan that works for your team. A glimpse of some of the great players to come out of HBCU school. Sam Jones won 10 NBA championships with the Boston Celtics. Charles Oakley, you saw there, a great enforcer all those years with the Knicks. Earl the Pearl Monroe. And if you are Kenneth Blakeney, the three-point shooting, it's been Howard's calling card all season, especially here in Norfolk. Well, he's done a great job of implementing an offensive system that translates to the personnel that he brings in. He spreads defenses out with great ball movement and making sure that the ball goes from one side to the other. Then they're able to get those high percentage threes. And once you play them too tight on the line, they can also get straight line drives. Ersten all over Tavares falling away. And in the half court right now, Delaware State not getting a lot of easy opportunities. That is Howard's defense. They play a packed in defense that protects the paint, making it tough for you to get those touches that you're accustomed to. But then also you, you go against contested threes and tough twos. There is Dockery. Towns has eight. Face guarded by Ova. Now backing down, a lot of contact. Towns up off the window, didn't quite get the bounce, but he'll get two shots. Oba picks up his first. Towns, who's playing the four for Howard, is a matchup discrepancy for players like Oba. And it's because of his ability to play inside and out. Oba's a more of a traditional post guy. And Howard's going to have to use Towns inside a lot more. Shy Odom, who's one of the best players in this league, preseason player of the year. He's battled injuries all season long. He's out today. You've got Odom, Dom Campbell, and Osi Koji all in concussion protocol, all out today. And then we found out just minutes before tip, A.J. Magbagor, another player off this Howard bench, a late scratch. So this is a team that only played really six guys yesterday. Three starters played 40 minutes. You come back. No off day in between. And they're going to rely heavily on their starters again. And those are all capable front court players that can really rebound the ball for you. Jevin Munez knocks down the outside shot. He had 28 in the regular season finale. Seven 20-point games this season. He can go off. Ian Robinson, all 12 for Delaware State. Towns falling away. Left it short. Robinson inside through the trees draws the foul. You see how crafty Robinson is. I mean, he can do a little bit of everything. He's got a beautiful mid-range jumper. He's also able to get to the middle of the floor because he plays off the of two feet, uses his pivots well, and knows how to draw fouls. The foul is on Towns. His first he fouled out in the semifinal win against Norfolk State. Tonight, it's the Big 12 Championship, 6 p.m. on ESPN, Iowa State and Houston, the top two seeds. And then NC State and UNC in the ACC Championship. How about the Wolfpack last night? Kevin Keats potentially coaching for his job down late in the semifinals against Virginia. Bank shot three to send the game into overtime, and they win an OT. Yeah, I mean, a much-needed win for Coach Keats. And um, a lot of that DJ Burns action, especially at, at the end there where he just started bodying guys. I mean, the guy has been a matchup nightmare since I've coached against him in high school. I mean, he's been Shaq for a long time. The traditional dominant post. He's going to take a lot of people's money at the YMCA for many years. Oh, my goodness. I mean, you got to be careful with him out there, man. I mean. I feel Rush Harris draws the foul. Yeah, I feel that DJ Burns is the type of guy that he's going to coach AAU at one point, and he's going to have a washcloth in his back pocket. If you've got any questions for that, just ask me later.
washcloth in the back pocket. Yeah. Gonna, They're always sweating, patting the forehead. Okay. Uh, go to some of these AAU tournaments. You'll see some guys like DJ Burns. Washcloth, huh? Yeah, washcloth. You know, a little bit bigger. Yes. It hangs out. Put anything on it or just dry? Oh, let's dry it first. Okay. By the back end of the tournament, it's going to be wet. So do you invest heavily in these washcloths, or is oh, yeah. it a hotel brand? No, well, you know, it depends on who the coach is. Six-point lead for Howard. MEAC championship winner for the NCAA tournament. Howard danced last season for the first time since 92. Munez the three, way offline. And Delaware State today not getting the second chances that they did against NC Central last night. Absolutely, and I think Howard paid attention to that when they watched him yesterday and understanding that they're going to have to limit Delaware State to one and done because on that second chance, they were capitalizing on it nine times out of ten. Howard, meanwhile, has eight second chance points already. Harris driving on Andrews. Lost it. It's a scramble. We got to tie up, jump ball. It'll stay with Howard. The Bison with a six point lead here at Norfolk Scope Arena, the site of the MEAC Championship. There is something greater than finishing first. True champions stand on principles. We fight. Learn how Abby could help you save. It's time to begin the hunt. To share the excitement. And bake your tails off. M&M's for all fun kind. Last year, MEAC Championship, it was Howard and Norfolk State. Huge three by Marcus Dockery to bring Howard within one. They were down four in the final 20 seconds. They get the ball back. Jelani Williams gets fouled. He would make both free throws. Norfolk State had a chance at the very end. Chris Bankston gets underneath the basket, rejected by the rim. Howard punched its ticket to the dance for the first time since 1992. And that was a great defensive play for Jelani Williams, who did a great job on Bankston defensively, but also getting to the line and hitting some clutch free throws. He has been sorely missed, but and been a leader on the offensive and defensive end for this team, but now he's had the lead in other ways. He wants to be a coach after he graduates, and so you can see that transition starting to take place so far. A yeah, young man who has dealt with three ACL tears in his career, was an all-conference player last year, and was expected to be a big part of the squad this year. He went down early in the season. Yeah, he did. I was actually at that game in Vegas where he went down, and um, it was unfortunate. And the, the room was quiet, and you could definitely tell that Howard was sad because they lost one of their leaders on the floor, but he's been able to lead in other ways as that additional coach out there on the bench. Raymond Somerville checking into the game. Big 6'11", Richard Jr. from Pennsylvania. He'll head to the free throw line. The foul is on Warfield, his second. And you can see Delaware State's going to start to try to work into the post because they have that size advantage on Howard. It's a size advantage. It's also a depth advantage in this game. Tomorrow, it's the day. The Selection Sunday. We have you covered on ESPN, 6 p.m. Eastern at Sports Center. Reese and the guys look at the men's field of 68 as the brackets are revealed. Bracketology follows with breakdowns of each region. Rinse and repeat. We've got the women's field of 68 revealed at 8. And then bracketology and the full breakdown immediately follows. Hairston using the shot fake over Robinson. Got it. Howard, five for nine from three. Five of their six field goals have been threes. And we talked about the depth aspect. And here's the thing. When you don't want to be out there in the Lions, Tigers, and Bears in the paint, you find a way to impact the game from the perimeter. Cameron Stick, big 6'8 junior on the putback. And we get a whistle and a foul. They're going to get Harris his first. And you can see that 
Delaware State is putting more of an emphasis on impacting the paint from their post positions and trying to crash the boards with reckless abandon. Now the identity of this Delaware State team being physical, getting those loose balls, those 50-50 balls. Officials don't have the DV Sport monitor today, so they're going to use our replays to judge the severity of the foul. So our truck is going to find the replay here, and the officials are going to take a look. Well, they're trying to see if there's any extracurriculars. Yeah, it's more than a common foul. And watching Harris there. It looks like a little elbow at the end. It is a common foul. Yeah, a little, a little chicken wing extension there. So how about that? Normally, they go to the scores table and they're looking at the monitor. Today, they're coming to us. They basically flipped around your monitor. They didn't flip it back, Anish. No, you had to flip it back. That's fine, though. Our truck will call for the replay, and they'll make the judgment. I appreciate that, though, because then we get a, a better explanation from those well, officials. right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Inside Harris, over to Towns. Dockery sets up and connects. Talk about the fantastic ball movement, putting Delaware State in conflict the entire time. The ball moved from one side of the floor to the other. Defense is always shifting, so you get high percentage shots. Howard has six threes today. Delaware State has six threes the entire MEAC tournament. And that's one thing Coach Waterman talked about was being able to shoot the ball better. Delaware State has done a really good job of getting to the middle of the floor because of their isolated players that can really go and get a bucket when needed. But you also have to play in system against a team as disciplined as Howard. Now Bryce Harris hasn't even gotten going yet. Strong to the tin. Good defense by Somerville. Harris just one point, no field goals. Nunez driving. It has not been pretty in the half court for the Hornets. It's not what they want to do. I mean, they want to make sure that they can see if their defense can lead the offense by getting out in the open floor through defensive stops, and they haven't had that. Tavares, that's not close. And again, shot clock winding down. You're taking a tough, contested shot. Over a pretty good defensive player in Bryce Harris, maybe the best defensive player in the league. One of them, and, and one of the things is he wasn't always that. I found out that Bryce Harris uh, had to take yoga classes to open up his hips, as Coach Blakeney talked about, so that he could move them better, move his feet better laterally. It's that warrior pose. Oh, yeah, warrior one, two. They got three now. I stop at one. You know, I dabble with two. Three, I start to get a little sore. Things start shaking. Marvel Pilates got Towns from the outside, missed everything. Even though Towns missed that, Delaware State doesn't want to get too many of those up. Nunez back iron, rebound Towns. Now the danger for Delaware State is against Howard. If you're trading twos for threes, the math will math for you real quick. Yeah, you don't need to take calculus or advanced physics to figure out how that works. And we get a foul. It's on Somerville. He is prone to foul trouble. Somerville's been frustrated. Wanting more calls on the other end of the floor. You can tell that Howard has established a lot of physicality against him. You see, Seth Towns is like, hey, his arm's all over me, man. Second foul on Somerville. That one rims out. Robinson wrestles the rebound away. Martez Robinson, he's a senior. He's been through it all at Delaware State. Follows his miss. 
and they'll get the foul on Howard. In those low situations, Martez Robinson, one of the offensive bright spots in this game against Howard, has had to work extremely hard. But when he gets to the middle of the floor, good things happen. So he was able to get a shot off. He missed it, but followed it. And that's where Dockery has to be able to box out instead of ball watch. Stan Waterman described Robinson to us this morning as a heart and soul player. For this program you think of what delaware state has gone through and this is a four-year kid baltimore city kid could have left has stuck it out and now a chance to send his team to the ncaa tournament if they win delaware state coming into this season had won six games or fewer in six consecutive seasons two years ago they were two and 26 and winless in conference yeah, you, you know, obviously the records show uh, some things, but you also didn't get to see the close games that they were in, the building blocks to where they were trying to be. Howard, even though they didn't get that offensive rebound, has just been quicker to the 50-50 balls today. Tavares has been quiet, still without a point, 0 for 3 from the field. He, Nunez, and Robinson are the big three. Yeah, Harrison has done a really good job on him in one-on-one -on -one matchups defensively. Nunez looking for help. And Howard will give him that shot all day. Dockery on the drive. Over to Towns. Dockery launches. The rebound pulled down by Alston Andrews, the senior from Detroit. And that's where Delaware State can be successful. Jevin Munez in transition before the defense can set. Absolutely, Anish. That is when they are at their best. When they can create offensive circulation in the open floor by getting defensive stops. They've struggled because Howard has been extremely efficient from the three-point line. As we see there from Jordan Harrison, who is still taking advantage of the open threes given to them through their offensive system seven of howard's eight field goals are three-pointers hairston in the passing lane tavares chasing him and the layup is good five straight for jordan hairston and the lead is 10. Jordan Harrison is doing it on both ends, guarding the best player on Delaware State and Tavares, but also just letting the game come to him by taking the shots that he is supposed to take and make. Well, we get a whistle and a foul. Howard up by 10. Hairston with 11 in the opening half. Get two entrees and an appetizer for $25 only at Applebee's. Zubin here in the studio. It's a three-peat in the America East Tournament for Vermont. Three-peat? What about a seven-time? He's been coach of the year in the America East. Coach Becker, he's done an incredible job with one arm, with one healthy arm right now. The other one's in the sling. But congratulations to Vermont. Yeah, he fell at his home on Wednesday. That's what that's all about. Some scores here, Coach? Well, right now, A.J. Storr is doing a great job for Wisconsin, and it's great to have Chucky Hepburn back for them. They're proving that. And in Mississippi State right now, down, down one to Auburn. Mississippi State was up early. Auburn's coming back. Mississippi State looking a little fatigued to me right now. We'll keep tabs on both of these games. Anish, we will see you at the half. We're going to have to dust off the old Taylor Coppenrath, T.J. Sorrentine reels. Vermont back in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, especially when you see new teams. It shows the parity in certain leagues. And so, shout out to Vermont. Getting it done. Ten-point lead for Howard. Largest of the game. Delaware State 7 of 17 from the field. Nunez, long three, offensive rebound.
Staten brings it back out. Here's Dean Shepard, known more for his defense. Irie Staten over Harris. Battle for the board. Oba had it, and he walked. But you're seeing just how hard it is for Delaware State right now to get good shots in the half court. It really has been, and they've taken a couple of ill-advised ones as, as well. But one of the things that I am noticing that is Delaware State is putting more of an emphasis on the offensive boards and got two second, two opportunities out of that, second and third chance, to try to see if they could score and con convert. Using the press. Good ball movement. Towns passed up the three. Towns working past Oba, turns it over. And Delaware State right now has a defensive lineup out there on the floor, especially with Shepard, who his coach was telling us when they asked the players, well, who's your basketball hero? Everybody went with an offensive player except Shepard, who said Patrick Beverly. And people looked at him like, wait, did you say Patrick Beverly? And he goes, yeah, I like to play defense. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody else was saying LeBron and Jordan and Kobe. But he said Pat Bev, meaning that he is accustomed to moving his feet, or like, as I like to say, moving the puppies, as well as being a little crazy. Just a little. Warfield with the underneath inbound squeezes it into Hairston, and that's going to be a jump ball possession arrow, Delaware State. And that's what Delaware State loves to do. We talked about it before. No cut, no catch ever seems easy. All right, when you're driving to the basket, there's always active hands coming at you, and so you you have to be able to take care of the ball against a team like this. Robinson's got 10 to lead the Hornets. That's three in black. Nunes has seven. Safar is not on the floor. He's scoreless. Andrews from the baseline, not even close. Towns rips away the rebound. Looked like he may have taken one to the chin. And now the officials call a timeout. Oba, who Stan Waterman calls the Dennis Rodman of this team, looked like he took one as well. Let's watch the replay here. And you can see how hard Seth Towns is out there fighting. Yeah, it looked like they just bumped each other yeah. accidentally. Yeah, head to head there. We found out last night watching the semifinals right underneath one of the baskets. Sometimes it takes a lot for a foul to be called. Oh, yeah, especially in the MEAC. And this is, uh, as Coach Waterman says, a man's <laughs> league. Shot clock down to seven. Hairston's got 11. Here comes Harris. Down low. Towns puts it in. A dozen for Seth Towns to lead all scores. And this is a team that doesn't get sped up by the shot clock or they don't get nervous when it starts to wind down. They just let their set run and trust the system. What should Delaware State do here in the half court to attack better? Continue oh, not that. Yeah. You're seeing they're trying to force it down low. They got to find ways to move the ball and get the ball to the middle of the floor. You see here, great offensive play. Playing off of two feet, Bryce Harris getting to the middle of the floor, drawing two, hitting the open man for the easy lay with Seth Towns. Down 10, Josh, but I like when they can score, which they haven't done a lot of, but they get the press set. They're getting back in the press. I think throwing Howard off their game a little bit with that, changing the defense is good for them. Yeah. Well, Anish just asked John Williams, hey, what is, what is how what does uh, Delaware State need to do to get to get back in the game? They've got to find a way to stop Seth Towns. He's got a dozen points right now. When he's at the four, he's a hard matchup. He's a hard matchup for for Delaware State, and they're making threes. And right now, Delaware State can't make any threes. That's a big difference. Back to the scope, and each will see it at the half.
All right, Zubin. Seth Towns is older than Josh Pastner, right? He's got his Ph.D. Let's just talk about that. I mean, the guy. And listen, I wouldn't want to be out of college just yet either if I can get my Ph.D. for free as well as avoid bills as long as I possibly can because life comes at you hard once you get out there in the real world. 26 years old, and he's a young man who's been through it. Started at Harvard, was the Ivy League Player of the Year as a sophomore. Missed the next two seasons with a knee injury. Transferred to his hometown school, Ohio State. Then missed all of 2021 with a back injury. Stepped away from basketball, thought he was done, and then wanted to give it one more go with Howard. And he's been an all-conference player. Tavares, meanwhile, the MEAC Freshman of the Year, gets on the board with a three and then commits the foul at the other end. You can definitely tell that he's a little flustered but was able to get a little momentum in his favor by seeing it go in. And he's a guy that goes in volumes. Once he sees it go in that one time, he can turn it on offensively. Uh, you get the sense Howard has controlled most of this first half, yet only a seven-point game. And Bryce Harris really has not been much of a factor he was one of the players that was in contention for player of the year in the MEAC. Towns misses. It went to Jamari Thomas of Norfolk State. Juarez turbines in. Kicks it out. Long jumper is good by Kyrie Staten, the junior from Baltimore. Staten has been fantastic as a reserve guy off the bench for Delaware State. See there, Staten had the pump fake, ward off the first defender, and then also knocked down a tough mid-range jumper over the ex extended arms of Seth Towns. Harris to the free throw line. Only one point so far. Second to leading scorer in the conference. Six foot four. Bowling ball shoulders plays a lot bigger than his height would indicate. Uh, one of the coaches was telling me if he was two or three inches taller, he's a slam dunk bona fide high major player. Absolutely, and honestly, I think a couple of inches taller, he's also a prospect for the NBA because of what he brings to the table as a serviceable player that can guard, that can shoot the three, and plays with extreme intensity air ball from Nunez the putback is there it's Sergers Delaware State accustomed to throwing a press at you from time to time Harris almost traveled it's stolen away Munez Tavares calling for it instead Munez wants the shot and last touch, Hairston, it'll stay with the Hornets. Tavares was open. And Delaware State is able to work themselves back into this game by crashing the boards, creating second chance points. We talk about them being the masters of messy, making the game as messy as possible because they've been able to play in that and they practice in that. And so that's just a comfort for them. They like the anarchy. Clock into single digits. Towns picks up Tavares. The freshman. Tried to dip underneath. It's not there. There's great vertical defense from Seth Towns and staying up and not committing the foul. Towns has been the aggressor 14 in this opening half. This thing about Seth Towns and Bryce Harris and Dockery. These are guys that take what the defense has given him. At this point, it's Seth Towns' moment. Kyrie Staten, the sweet pull-up. There comes Dockery on the handoff. Hairston from the outside. Got it. His third three of the opening half. He's got 14. And a timeout by Howard. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll be back for the front of the perimeter. Eight for 16 from three. Last night, 11 of 21 from three against Norfolk State. This is 
the best three-point shooting team in the MEAC. They've struggled at times defending the three. But Delaware State has only taken six three-pointers. They've only made seven threes in two-plus games here at Norfolk. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the test that they had yesterday has prepared them for just about anything and playing against one of the top defenses in the conference in Norfolk State. Tavares gets the bounce. And you see it, a guy that can score in droves. Once he sees it going that first time, he can be a matchup nightmare. The press nearly forced to turn over. And Howard will hold for one. Hairston with five. There's the double, poked away. Comes back to Towns, that beats the buzzer, and doesn't go, and the first half comes to an end. Delaware State, down six, seeking its first conference championship and first trip to the NCAA tournament since 2005. Howard trying to go to the big dance in back-to-back -back seasons. You're watching ESPN's Champ Week presented by Principal. We're about ready for the start of the second half in Norfolk. It is the MEAC Championship. Delaware State, the sixth seed. They're the upstart, the underdog in this tournament. Howard, the four seed, but they are the defending MEAC champions and the preseason pick in the conference. And Ishraf John Williams. When Howard was able to play loose and free and move the ball with precision, hit outside shots, they were in control. When the game turned into anarchy, Delaware State came back. A game between two conflicting styles. Obviously, Howard was able to get the ball in the basket by shooting at the perimeter, knocking down high percentage shots. But what you saw was Delaware tighten the screws and start to get themselves open floor opportunities and second chance points. But when Howard can shoot the three, they're the deadliest as they come because of their ability to spread the floor. Ball movement, offensive efficiency, moving the ball down the rainbow creates high percentage shots for them. And so they were able to cap relies on that. Delaware State was able to get paint touches, starting to get to the mid-range jumpers. You see there, Staten knocking down that mid-range jumper, and then second chance points. More opportunities at the basket, closer to the basket, lead to high percentage points for them. And so they were able to create some turnovers, muddy the water, and then play their style of play in the back end of that first half. Three-point shooting continues to travel for Howard. They have been outstanding from three here in Norfolk. They were the top shooting three-point team in the MEAC this season. Delaware State, second chance points, 10 of them in that first half. Howard as the higher seed, wearing the whites. Delaware State, the sixth seed in the black. Seth Towns at 14 points in the first half. Former Ivy League player of the year at Harvard. Here's Bryce Harris. Number two scorer in the MEAC, gets down low. And every time the ball goes inside, it feels like Delaware State is able to get a hand on it. Dockery lost it, regains, beats the shot clock, missed the shot. That's one thing I've noticed about teams that get to the middle of the floor against Delaware State. Usually good things happen, but when you're playing against Delaware State, they are so active with their hands. They're getting deflections or steals because of that, and so you ha can't have careless dribbles in the paint against this team. After Robinson missed the wide open three, Howard back on the attack. Skip pass, Harris lines it up, and he is still without a field goal. Only three points, all three throws in the first half. You know, he struggled to establish himself in the post, and a lot of that is because he's not getting ISOs down there. It's swarm defense, and so you see a pack of black jerseys surround him once he gets it down there. They're quite literally the hornet's nest. Andrews finds a cutting Robinson vetoed at the rim by Harris. You know, Bryce Harris, we talk about he's not just an offensive guy. He can impact the game on the defensive end because of his ability to get off the ground quickly. Even, even though he's undersized, he is great at altering shots as well as blocking. 6-4, average a block a game, a steal a game, and almost eight rebounds. Munez 
beautiful move through the Sequoias. Yeah, and you can see they're getting to do what they do best, which is impact the game in the post. And Delaware State, the closest it's been since it was 20 to 16, about midway through that first half. Here comes Dockery, turbines to the rim and gets two shots. That was one of the few times that we've seen Howard get to the middle of the floor and actually get the ball up at the basket, usually against this Delaware State team. It's been a struggle for them to get the ball up because Delaware State corrals the ball. All their hands are on the ball at the same time. Wesley Oba picked up his second foul, junior from England. Came to Delaware State as a Juco transfer. Dockery started at Maryland, played sparingly in his two seasons in College Park. Now in his second season at Howard last year, had a big three-pointer toward the end of the conference championship against Norfolk State. Nunez guarded by Warfield. A lot of dribbling. And they're going to call a foul on Oba away from the ball. That's his third. Oba doesn't score a whole lot. He's not a guy they look for in the offensive end, but he does a lot of little things in here, just battling for position. Uh, gets caught dragging Warfield. Yeah, Oba is definitely needed and necessary for this Delaware State team. To that get might have been number four. Yeah, and we talk about his impact being a guy that creates second chance opportunities, does a great job on the defensive end as far as corralling the ball down, rebounding it, and making it so you can't get second chance points. Well, you hate to say it, but so much of how this game plays out will be determined by how it's called. If it's called tight, it favors Howard. If they let them play, it favors Delaware State. Yeah, Delaware State wants that chaos. So over to the bench, Staten comes in, Warfield airmails the layup. Warfield, he's down. It's five on four, Nunez the three. Delaware State within two, while Warfield is lying on his back underneath the basket. Now able to get up, and he's hopping off. And remember, this is a Howard team today without Shy Odom, without Dom Campbell, two of their bigs. They're without Osea Koji. They're without A.J. Magbagor. They're down four players who are part of their bench. They've had 78 missed games this season by rotation players. That's top five nationally. Yeah, and obviously they have still find a, find a way every game they played it to make it competitive. And the reason being is because the bench has had the experience now. Uh, the, the utility guys have had the experience. Elijah Williams, brother of Jelani Williams, who's out for the season, was one of the top players on the team last year. Here's Munez, and Delaware State has taken the lead. That's what Delaware State does. I mean, they can get out in the open floor with the best of them, but they have to get those defensive stops. And right now, you are seeing them get defensive stop after defensive stop that is leading to high percentage shots on the other end of the floor. Cinderella's got a second wind. Harris backs his man down, and that's his first field goal. And Howard back on top. Here comes Tavares, no call. Rims in and out, battle for the board. And we're going to get a foul. Towns pleading his case. And they get Seth Towns, it's his second foul. Now you can feel the pendulum shift here at the scope. It's a game of rhythms. It's about 
can I maintain that rhythm, which is something that Howard is struggling to do, and can I keep you out of it, which is something that Delaware State is trying to maintain. And now you got to be careful if you're Howard. That's three on Towns. We mentioned all the missing pieces. Warfield just limped off the court. Towns fouled out in the semifinals. There aren't many bodies left. Staten on the drive. Dockery got a piece. It'll stay with Delaware State. And you can see the bodies are hitting the floor. The urgency is starting to set in on both of these teams. They're understanding the importance of rebounding, which is something that has helped Delaware State. They have the size advantage over Howard, and so they're trying to use that. Sergers checks in for Delaware State. He'll inbound. Tavares, the MEAC freshman of the year. Averaging almost 21 a game over his last 10. Backing down Harrison, the fall away. Not there. Rebound Harris. Dockery had the matchup. And able to draw the foul. Fourth team foul on Delaware State. But the Hornets right back in this game. You see Delaware State getting themselves in a rhythm by getting out in the open floor. Knocking down the three. Munez, big shot. We talk about the three-headed monster and Tavares Robinson and Munez. Now it is Munez's time to get himself going. He's attacked the basket, showing his ability to get those paint touches in the open floor, catching and taking the rhythm threes, and he has been the catalyst to how Delaware State has been able to get themselves back in this game. 15 points to lead all scores, three of five. From beyond the arc for the sophomore, Jevin Munez. He was part of the MEAC All-Rookie team last year. He has more than doubled his scoring average from a season ago as Dockery, an 81% free throw shooter, gets the first one for Howard. Warfield standing up behind the Howard bench. It looked like he rolled an ankle when he went down, but the injury concerns which have been an issue all season. It started early with Jelani Williams going down for the year. And then Shai Odom, very talented player, preseason player of the year in the MEAC. He's been in and out of the lineup. Odom, Doc Campbell, two of their top bigs out today, along with Osi Koji, A.J. Magbegor. Now Warfield's status is a question. Staten with a sweet move to get around Harris. Delaware State has a little juice in this second half. They have closed within one. They briefly took the lead a few moments ago. That play started with Robinson playing with two feet in the paint, being patient, letting his cutters work, and finding an uh, open statin for a layup. Harris backing down Munez. Off the window for two. Harris has been able to get himself going because of the three-point threats around the perimeter. They've got to play him isolated. Staten, he's provided a spark off the bench. He's got eight. Getting to his spots, he's a mid-range guy, just showing his abilities to get to the high percentage shots that work for him. Harris has the matchup on Munez if they can get it to him. Warfield is at the scores table. That's good news for Howard. Towns on the drive. Lost it. It'll stay with the Bison. And Isaiah Warfield, you can tell he's it, it's still it. limping a little bit. Walking on and jogging on gingerly. I'll tell you, Nish, that don't look good, buddy. It, look, it would look good to me if I'm the opponent. 
So if you're Delaware State, I'm going to get the going right at Oh, I'm going right at that ankle each time. I'm attacking that side. Warfield, a Liberty transfer where he played for Richie McKay. Shot clock down to two. Towns hoists. Cannot hit. Warfield keeps it alive. Dockery had it. And he gets clipped by Munez, who is called for the foul. And Warfield doing a good job of keeping the ball alive. Hustling, even though he's on one wheel right now. And you see Dockery trying to find a way to keep it alive and drawing a foul. Five team fouls in the second half on Delaware State. Only one on Howard. And Harris goes to work down low. He's getting more comfortable in the second half. Working down low. He's got two more shots. And now one more foul from the Hornets. And Howard is in the bonus. We talk about his ability to now get more space because of Howard showing their ability and efficiency from the three-point line. There's not going to be deeper stunts. There's not going to be... Uh, defense is over there just overplaying him and helping off of him. SEC tournament that has seen some chaos. Auburn right now leading Mississippi State. Florida and AM, the other semifinal championship game Sunday at 1 on ESPN. Kentucky, Tennessee, both bowing out early. Yeah, and that's how you know it's tournament play. I mean, you can see the desperation on a lot of these teams, especially the ones that are unassuming, kind of like this Delaware State team. You know, he's had 19 points in the first meeting against Howard. Here comes Robinson. He got off to a fast start. They go right at Warfield. And Robinson able to draw the foul. Yes, sir. You got to go at him. At this point, knowing that that Warfield is a little is a little hurt, you got to go at him and see what he's made of. See how well that foot is working. Martez Robinson, an 85% free throw shooter. Regular season, Howard won both meetings against Delaware State. In fact, Delaware State has lost six straight to the Bison. The Hornets' last win in this series came on the 5th of March, 2020. And in that season, Howard went 4-29. and There's a lot of similarities in terms of these programs trying to climb from the gulags up to the penthouse well i think it's just that get it from the mud mentality both of these teams were not given anything they've had to earn it and so you can see how they play how they've been in responding and there is munez again he's got 17 delaware state back on top yeah, and we talk about the three-headed monster of Delaware State and Tavares, Robinson, and Munez. They all have different things that they bring to the table. Tavares can score it in bunches. And, you know, Robinson is a matchup nightmare. And then you've got Munez, who is the silent assassin for Harris, bully ball down low. And they get searchers with a foul. You can see Munez here just attacking, getting downhill. Once he can get his shoulders in front of you and help side comes in late, he's going to score that ball every time. Now, it's interesting talking with some of the Howard folks before the game. They said, when you look at Delaware State, they remind us of where we were as a program a few years ago. Now, Howard, prior to this three-year run that they've had under Kenneth Blakely, they had only had one winning season in the previous 29, and Blakeney uh, got this thing going a few years ago. Last year, they get to the MEAC Championship, beat Norfolk State on this floor in Norfolk. Was it Norfolk State's home arena? That's Eccles a couple of miles down the road. And now they're back here on the big stage. Delaware State has not had a lot of success in a long time. Six straight seasons with six wins or less. 
It's been losing season after losing season. They've dealt with coaching changes. They showed signs of life toward the end of last year. And then this season, even a lot of their losses, close losses, games, they were right there. And in this tournament, they've shown a grittiness and a toughness. We set it off the very top. This isn't prim and proper ball gown Cinderella. This is Cinderella with ripped jeans, a leather jacket, and brass knuckles. Absolutely. And so you can see that Delaware State had to adapt to the conference. Coach Waterman had to adapt to the conference. And we talked about him being a finesse guy. But once he saw that it was a man's, a man's league, he had to make sure that he brought in the personnel that could withstand the brunt of what the conference delivers. And he had to adapt. He said, my preference originally was got to play finesse basketball. I realized quickly you can't do it in this league. Hairston in trouble. Kicks it out. Towns. No good. Hairston may have gotten away with a walk. Loose ball. And right now this game has turned into a slop fest. It's turned into a mutter. Just how Delaware State likes it. That is exactly what they want. They are molded by that. They are born in that. That is what they do. It's what their practices look like. So if you don't practice that way, you don't want to play that way. And I don't think Howard plays to that type of level. Uh, and so the thing is that they've got to get back to what they do best, playing in the half court, letting their offense work, not being sped up, making sure that they can dictate pace, play late into the shot clock. Harris fighting down low, and every time that ball gets into the paint, it just seems black jerseys converge. And now, if you're Howard at times, it's almost as if you're looking for the help to come. Absolutely, and that's the thing you have to have. You have to be strong with that ball against a team like Howard that has defenders with active hands, always swiping down, always making it tough for you to just get the basket that seems easy, but it isn't. Howard only two for nine from the field in the second half. 0 for four from three. Loose ball. And we're going to get a foul on Hairston. Now that situation looked like Hairston was going after the ball. And it got down before... Uh, you know, went for those knees a little bit. We've seen that last night be called as a play on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so that's what I'm saying. You have to adapt to your, your officiating. And so understanding that that's a no-go, understood, move on. Seventeen points for Munez to lead all scores. On the drive. Harris may have gotten a piece. Hairston and Towns both had 14 in the first half, none in the second. That ball's tipped, picked off. Here comes Delaware State. You see how Munez pull up three. Got it! 20 for Huge. Munez. Huge three for Munez. And you see how active Delaware State has been defensively. It's hard for it's hard for Howard to get any type of clear passes. The passing lanes are being ate up. Drives, if you bet, if you have empty calorie drives, they're going to take advantage of it. Delaware State has already knocked off the two and the three seed in this tournament. Dockery forced it. Harris chases it down. Second chance. The drop off. Towns has been tentative here in the second half. Passed up some open shots. Ball never hit the rim. It's a shot clock violation. Big shot, Chevin Munez leading the comeback. Created by chaos. And one of the things that Munez has been able to do is capitalize from the three-point line. In a Sunday showcase doubleheader at one on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Now for today's expert moves brought to you by Principal Jevin Munez. Big second half, 13 after halftime, 20 for the game, 4 of 6 from 3, and he spearheaded this Hornets comeback. Yeah, a lot of that 3, Delaware State starting to get defensive stops, taking it up another notch on the defensive end by getting deflections, getting steals, turnovers, and then getting out in the open floor, and they're finding Munez on the other end of the floor to knock down shots. Largest lead of the game, extending to six. Matador defense from Howard, too easy for Robinson.
Howard hit eight threes in the first half. 0 for 5 in the second half. Towns, catch, release, make it 0 for 6. Follows his miss. New 20. Towns, the tough ball away. Tipped into the air. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch. We're going to talk about it. It'll stay with Howard. Staten did look like he got a piece of it last. And that has been the issue with Howard. When they can't shoot the three and struggle to get the ball to the middle of the floor, they struggle to score the ball. Towns will try it again. He's gone cold after a hot start. Now 5 of 16 from the field, 2 of 11 from 3. We talked about fatigue. We wonder if, due to the lack of depth that Howard has, is it starting to creep up on them where their legs are starting to go? They're not able to get to those shots that they were accustomed to earlier. Sergers the rebound, poked away. It comes to Robinson. Yunez lets it fly. That one grazes the side of the rim. Tavares all over Dockery. And they get the freshman with a foul. I feel the defensive intensity starting to step up for Delaware State. Howard is in the bonus. Eighth team foul, so a one and one coming. And in Dockery, you've got one of the better free throw shooters on this team. This is a very good free throw shooting team. 76% as a squad. Oh, you mentioned fatigue. These Howard starters, even though they played the early game yesterday, the starters played big minutes. Yeah, it's starting to, it could be starting to take its toll on Howard, especially in their main cast of players that impact for them, where the legs start to, you know, give on them a little bit. The shots become shorter, and you can tell, like, defensive rotations start to be a little bit more lagged. It's harder to get those rebounds that you were getting in that first half, and you wonder, they gave so much in that first half that it's starting to impact them in the second. Staten's been a spark plug with eight off the bench. He's been fantastic. Nunez has 20. Four to shoot. Robinson against Towns. It rattles out. And Howard turns it over. That dog, Staten. Being in the right place at the right time, creating chaos for Howard. You can never get comfortable around this Delaware State team. I mean, that's the thing. If you get comfortable because you have a light buffer or anything of that nature, they don't stop working. They continue to get after it. Tavares down low. Sergers missed the bunny. And then gets bailed out by the foul. And Tavares gives his big guy a hug, who's in there because Oba's on the bench with four fouls. Absolutely. And Tavares being a good leader and telling them to think about the next play. Don't dwell on those situations that happen and they're gone and you can't get the moment back. And it impacts you the next few plays ahead. And now foul trouble becoming very real for Howard. Towns picked up his fourth. Warfield has fourth, and we ran through the list earlier of the missing pieces. No Odom, no Campbell, no Koji, no Magbagor. Warfield, who's got four, playing you know, with a little bit of a bum ankle that he may have rolled earlier in this half. The AAC Championship comes your way tomorrow at 315 the big 12 championship six eastern iowa state and houston the top two seeds and then tonight acc final nc state and unc the wolfpack survive in advance conjuring up memories of 1983 last night big win against virginia late three that banked in to send the game to ot and then knocking off uva in overtime MEAC Championship, Delaware State, 
last reached the NCAA tournament in 2005. Howard, defending conference champion. Harris, one of the best players in the league, kicks it out. Dockery, strong to the tin. And he's fouled. It is Tavares, and that'll be his third. Yeah, Tavares has struggled a little bit in this game, playing with a lot of intensity, but also getting a couple of fouls in the meantime of that. So it's going to have to be smart, especially going into the latter part of this half. Well, the free throw line could be Howard's salvation this afternoon. They've got more than six minutes since their last field goal. And the one saving grace for the Bison, that was Delaware State's ninth team foul. So one more foul, double bonus time, and it's two free throws from here on out. Yeah, Howard is understanding that they're a little, you know, cold right now offensively from the three-point line. In their defense, this building is very cold. Oh, yeah, I mean, that was pun intended, sir. I don't think I've felt my feet since about I tried to get up. under four of the first half. I tried to get up. I looked about 10 years older walking. <laughs> Robinson devoured by Elijah Williams. So Towns on the bench with the four fouls. Staten took it away. Williams gets it back. Harris wants it. They never saw him. And now we get an official's whistle. Yeah, it seems to be some confusion here, maybe with the clock. That's the only thing that I can come to terms with there. Doesn't seem to be any foul issues. That's yeah, the shot clock. So what they're saying is Staten gained possession, had it taken away. So the shot clock should have reset to 30. And they put 26 back on it. Howard can tie with a three. Warfield gets it underneath to Williams. Nice feed. As you can see, Howard is having to fight to get the ball in the basket, especially with the three-point shot going cold. That was their first field goal in more than six and a half minutes. Williams, the block, has made a couple of big defensive plays. He really has been one of those guys on the secondary that have been able to come over from help. And another foul called as Warfield hit the deck. Howard at the strike with a chance to retake the lead when we come back. This second half, Delaware State with its defense and with the clutch play of Jevin Munez has taken control of this game. What has changed? Well, it's been the defense, like you said. The defense, the rebounding, the 50-50 balls, the gritty play has turned in Delaware State's favor. We wanted to use that to their advantage, especially with a little bit more depth than Howard has, as well as size. The danger for the Hornets, that last foul they picked up before we went to break was their 10th team foul. Double bonus from here on out for Howard. And Bryce Harris, first team, all MEAC. He was on the all-defensive team as well. He's been their Hercules this season. At 16 in the semis, 28 points, three blocks, nine boards in the quarters. One out of two. And another foul, this time it's on Elijah Williams. Fifth team foul on Howard. Tied at 56, seven and a half to play.
Warfield is in there with four fouls. Towns on the bench with four. Oba's got four, and he's on the bench for Delaware State. And they get Williams for another foul. Three on Elijah Williams. Nunez going to work on Warfield, who's got those four fouls. He walls up, put back, not there. Second effort, third effort, and they call a foul. Now, so they didn't call it this tight in the first half. It's been called much tighter. And I think the officials can sense the urgency on both of these teams and want to make sure that they keep it clean going into the final, you know, seven minutes of this half. Two-point lead for Delaware State. And we are back to even with 6.40 to go. It's a huge finish from Bryce Harris, using his body to ward off the defender and still finding a way to get the ball up to the basket with his offhand. Dribbling by Tavares. Harrison can't stick with him. Towns back in there, grabs the board. Dockery lost it, no call. That's the thing about this Delaware State team. It may seem like it's open for a second, but those active hands that pay dividends for them. Drive, dish, Robinson for the lead, no. Andrews getting ready to check in for Delaware State. to shoot. Dockery stripped, regains, puts it up and beats the shot clock. And if you're going to have to score on Delaware State in the paint area or off the drive, those are what those shots are going to look like because it's not going to be pretty. A trip to the NCAA tournament on the line and a two-point game with less than five minutes to go. Martez Robinson knows Towns has the four fouls. Surgers inside. Think about that. Surgers was in the right place at the right time. With Bryce Harris having to come over and rotate, there was nobody on the back end to guard him. Harris. Powers down low. And there hasn't been an answer for Harris, especially with Surges in there. She really struggled to guard him without fouling. Nunez authored his eighth 20-point game of the season today. Robinson, little jab step. Against the 6'8 Towns. 
Staten, the floater to beat the shot clock. No. Offensive rebound. Robinson had it, and it comes to Dockery. And he's been an absolute dog fight for possessions once the, once the shot goes up. Howard has really struggled in the second half in creating second chances. Dockery lines it up and rims out. And it will stay with Howard. Media timeout with 3.26 to go. And a two-point game in the MEAC Championship. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Let's build a retirement and benefits. Every once in a while, there's a turnover, turns into a Mississippi State bucket. That's over on ESPN as we speak. Here's the co-player of the year alongside John L. Davis. Well, he's going to have to be on the glass, Josh. That is good. I think this game comes down to the rebounding. And what happens at that free throw line what, between UAB and this South is one Florida? Of the, hey, Coach, one of the best games of the day is this South Florida UAB game. And it's because we're in the studio. That's why. That is why. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, we got a good one here and a good finish. We're going to get a foul. It's going to be against Howard. And if that's on Warfield, that's five. Yeah, it's definitely on Warfield. Oh, you can tell, like, since that ankle injury, he's been hobbled, and you can definitely tell how Delaware State had been attacking him to get him out of the game because he has been an impact player for them. It'll be a one and one. 62 60 Howard. Tavares missed the first, grabs his own rebound. Rushed the shot, didn't have to. Harris wants it. Harris has done most of his work in the second half, driving downhill. No good. Loose ball. Bodies flying. Delaware State ball with a chance to tie with a two and take the lead with a three. So Warfield is fouled out. The five on the floor for Howard right now. Hairston Towns, who's got four fouls. Dockery. One of the heroes of the MEAC championship last year, Harris and Elijah Williams. Tavares, the MEAC freshman of the year out there for Delaware State, along with Robinson, Muniz, Austin Andrews, and Staten, who will inbound. It's been an absolute war, especially in the second half. Obviously, Delaware State taking the lead, giving themselves a little bit of a buffer. Howard fighting to get back their lead. And now both of these teams are trying to find a way to get over the hill. Delaware State last reached the NCAA tournament in 2005. A program that won just six games a season ago. The year before that, they were 2-26. They've knocked off the two and the three seed in this tournament. Looking to knock off the four and the defending MEAC champion, Howard. Nunez, 22 points to lead all scorers. Looking for room, almost a three-second violation. And the rebound snagged by Harris. That was fantastic defense for Williams there, who walled up. Didn't foul, didn't drop the arms, made sure that he just played vertical. Dockery drives, kicks it out. Harris charging down the lane, lost it. And Tavares threw it off Dockery back to Delaware State. And you see now that... Bryce Harris has been one of the focal point players. They're able to get those deflections again. They're able to start to hone in on him. 
A timeout on the floor. 1.56 to go in regulation. A trip to the big dance at stake. For moderate to severe Crohn's disease, Sky Rizzi is the championship going down to the wire. A season ago, Howard it trailed by four with 20 seconds to go against Norfolk State. Rallied back and punched their first ticket to the NCAA tournament since 1992. The Bison looking to make it back-to-back -back trips for the first time in school history. Delaware State has been sitting near the bottom of the MEAC for some time. They started to make their move upwards this year. Sixth seed in this tournament. I don't think anybody really gave the Hornets a chance coming to Norfolk. They beat South Carolina State. They beat NC Central. And they got a chance here against Howard. Three games where they were decidedly the underdog in each one. It's nothing like an underdog mentality. And you can Especially tell that, this time of the year. Yeah, and you can tell these guys have taken that on and using that to their advantage. You don't expect them to do what they've done. And they've used that and capitalized. March loves a good slipper story. Robinson against Dockery. Doesn't go. Towns corrals the rebound. No foul. Oba's back in there. He's got four. 120 to go. Ten to shoot. Harris, attack mode, blocked, and they'll call Munez with the foul. And Bryce Harris did a great job of sealing there. Was able to get downhill, draw himself a foul where he could get to the line. And I'm going to tell you, man, I mean, I say draw, but that's a tough one for me, man. Like, I thought that that was solid defense from Munez. You can see why he's upset there. Harris has done a lot of his work at the stripe. 74% free throw shooter. Offense for defense substitution. Staten in. Oba out. For those looking to watch the UAB USF AAC semifinal, that game will begin on the ESPN app. We will pick it up in progress once we're done here. Howard up four, a minute to go. Nunez for three. It doesn't go. Towns the rebound. The eighth year senior eyeing his first NCAA tournament bid of his lengthy career. Williams lost it. It goes out of bounds. Back to the Hornets. We're back in 30 seconds. Brass knuckles and a little bit of attitude. Howard was the preseason favorite. They've had a battle through injuries, and this game in many ways has been a microcosm of their season. Missing key players. And they had a late scratch right before tip. Foul trouble has really shortened their bench. There's not a lot of bodies left. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's what we talk about, the next man up mentality. The standard is the standard. The way you practice, you practice as if. You know, the next guy that could be an impact player for your team. Instead of depending on one guy or two guys or this guy or that guy, it has to be that type of mentality in order to have a winning culture. And that is something that Coach Blakely has done a fantastic job of doing in this program. Nunez will inbounds right in front of us. He gets it back. Hornets going quickly, and that is poked away out of bounds. 27 to shoot. 40.4 left on the game clock. I've loved Elijah Williams' motor and energy coming off the bench, being one of those guys who just will do the dirty work for Howard. Tavares trying to give it up. Balls on the ground. 
And it's going to Howard and Seth Towns lets out a scream and a sneer of cold command. Because Seth Towns has had to fight for every possession. He's come in, even though he hasn't been shooting the ball to the clip that he'd like, he has been doing the other things that are necessary in order to win games, like rebound the ball. We talk about it all the time. Rebounds get you rings. Boards raise banners. We're going to look at this. And who does it go out of bounds on? Yeah, that's out of bounds on Delaware State. Andrews was right there. Ball hit him while his body was out of bounds. And now the Hornets are going to have to foul. And they foul Towns. They tried to tie him up. Two shots coming for Seth Towns, who in so many ways is the face of perseverance, not just for this Howard basketball team this season, but in college basketball. Yeah, He's missed four of the last five years due to injury. Started his career back in the 2016-2017 season. There are guys who he came into college with who were on their second contract in the NBA. Absolutely. And obviously, I, I think he had a plan going into college when he first started that he wanted to be one of those guys. And obviously, injuries plagued him. And he... For a second there, wasn't even playing basketball. And so you think about the amount of adversity that this guy has gone through mentally to have the fortitude to be able to come back and give everything he can for a cause for the Howard Bison. I mean, it's it's really a story. Nunez says not so shot. fast. 66-62. Timeout. 24.2 seconds to go. Came to Howard. They call him Unk. 26 years old. Getting his doctorate. And uh, you, you think of all those things that led to what this moment now could be if Howard holds on and he gets his first taste of the NCAA tournament. Absolutely. It's, it's a situation that a lot of guys would have quit. And that's what we talk about, that mental fortitude. And we talk about Coach Blakeney bringing in guys of high character, guys that know how to win, guys that have been in situations where their backs are against the wall and still find a way. I mean, we talk about Jelani Williams being one of those guys. Uh, we, we talk about guys like Jordan Harrison, who's been a journeyman out there and has found a home where he's been able to be an impact player, a guy that wasn't expected to be out there on the floor and is out here contributing great minutes. And so you look at this team, it's a team of high character individuals that are selected by Coach Blakeney to build this culture here for Howard. Towns is fouled again, and while Howard is on the cusp, it's important to remember a year ago in this very game, with almost the same exact time left, Howard was down four and came back and won. Yes, so that's why you cannot count this Delaware State team out. Oh, that's not a foul. That's a tie. No, yeah, it's so, a tie of a 50-50 ball. And the possession arrow went to Delaware State. And now we'll get a foul on Elijah Williams. It'll send Delaware State to the line. And you talked about this Delaware State team. They never give up. You talk about it before the Cinderella story. Cinderella's got brass knuckles, ripped jeans, leather jacket, leather jacket. Maybe I'm a cigarette dangling I'm from gonna the mouth. Some, I'm gonna put some black Air Force Ones on there too, <laughs> just to put the icing on the cake. These guys are always willing to fight and battle. Tavares gets the first, 79 percent free throw shooter. The MIAC Rookie of the Year.
two-point game. The main thing for Howard is they're going to have to take care of the ball. Almost turned it over. Harris up ahead to Dockery. Over to Hairston. And he is swarmed and fouled. So two shots for Howard. And another chance to make it a two-possession game. 14.1 to go. Jordan Hairston, fourth stop. He played at UNC Asheville, your alma mater. Yeah. Texas A&M Corpus Christi, a junior college stop, or rather a Division II stop. And now Howard. You talk about adversity, right? Like, same thing with Jordan Harrison, guy that could have been in a situation where he could have just walked away. But found a home, found a fit for him. Four-point game, Tavares to Robinson. He lays in the two. 6.9 seconds to go. Timeout, Stan Waterman. For so many teams in college basketball, these conference championship games are their one shining moment. You get in... You're probably a 15 or a 16 in this case. I would guess the winner of this game most likely a 16 seed. Yeah. But just to get into the field, to hear your name called tomorrow is such a big deal. And we are potentially seconds away, or if we go to overtime, a few more minutes away from seeing some real raw emotion on this floor. Absolutely, and the thing is, is that I don't think people understand how hard it is to get to this point. You know, you may get there one time in your career, or none. I get it into Hairston. He is fouled by the sophomore, Munez. And Hairston back to the free throw line, 78% free throw shooter. 5.5 seconds to go. Two shots, both teams in the double bonus. Howard can secure a third straight winning season with a victory today. To put that into context, in the 29 seasons prior, they had one winning season. Talk about culture. And talk about coaching. Hairston gets them both. 5.5 seconds to go. Here comes Tavares. Hoists it up. They call a foul. Three shots coming for Tavares. Williams commits the foul. And this is not over. Now you make two. You miss the third. Offensive rebound. Tip-in opportunity. Yeah, that is a foul on Williams. It's three shots. Elijah Williams has fouled out. And this is not over. And you see what I mean. This team never backs down. They never go away. In that spot, though, you have to know, right? Not to foul. You have to know. It's a two-possession game. He, let it, he lets it fly. He makes it okay. But it's 1.7 and you get the possession. And Delaware State does not have any timeouts left. Now they are looking whether it was a two or a three. There's about a dozen three-point lines on this floor. The orange line is the... There's no doubt. Three-point line in question. So that is a... Three-point shot. His feet leave the ground before that white line, which is furthest back. Yeah, but to your point, Anish, I mean, make those first two. Miss the third. So what is Delaware State going over in their huddle? Because what happens if you miss the first? 
If you miss the first, you make both. And then see if you can get yourself a, a steal on the inbound. Play it to play it to a certain position where it's advantageous for you to get the steal and see if you can hoist it up there before the shot before the time goes out. But the goal is to make the first two. Tavares today, two for three at the stripe. It is a three-shot foul, right? 79% free throw shooter on the season. And what they did was they changed the time, giving him 2.2 seconds. So they've gone over the strategy. Ideal situation, make the first make two. Make the first two. Miss the third. Miss the third. I'd even try to throw over in there. And Tavares gets the first. Big spot for a freshman who down the stretch played like one of the best players in the conference. Missed the second. And now if you're Howard, do you just back off? No. Because you don't want to give them a rebound and a chance yeah, for a three. A so now you got to miss this and you find a miss way to it. get it to the three-point line. Exactly. And so if you can get it, you got a guy like Oba who's in there known for his rebounding prowess. See if he can tap it out. Put your shooters on the perimeter. Put it somewhere in that vicinity so that Delaware State can at least tie it. Kenneth Blakeney calls off the clock while they're doing that. Yeah, and the other thing to remember here, possession arrow right now goes to Delaware State. So if you get a situation where Howard gets a rebound, exactly. you get the immediate tie-up, you get the possession arrow, it could still leave you enough time to get a three-point shot to tie. Absolutely. So working to try to get that 50-50 going in your favor with minimal time taken off the clock. So you have to do it extremely quickly. Now in terms of how you want to miss this shot, what are you telling Tavares? You want to, you want to miss towards Oba. You want to miss towards Oba, I'd have my shooters closest to him. I'd probably put Munez closest to him because he, even though you're on the perimeter, with Dockery and Hairston, I'm still guarding Robinson. And it didn't hit the rim. And it's going to go the other way. You got to at least hit the rim. I don't understand why he did that. I think he was, was he trying to hit an area? I think he was trying to guarantee the miss. But the ball has to hit has the rim. Has to hit the rim. Delaware State needs a steal and a three. Howard trying to get it inbounds. Harris over to Towns. Chucks it ahead. Time expires. Howard going back to the NCAA tournament. They defend their MIAC crown. We talked about the adversity that this team has gone through, the injuries, the several different starting lineups, 